Good morning and welcome to the Armchair Quarterbacks. Take me out to the ball game as uh, we're in full summer gear, baby. Let's get ready for uh, another great weekend. It's end of June. Fourth of July weekend is next weekend. We look forward to that. And uh, I've got my cabana gear on, mainly because I really like this office. It's an office uh, Hawaiian shirt. I'm going Stanley Hudson today. All right, let's get going. Let's get rolling as the Chicago Cubs had a combined no hitter last night as that, uh, you know, no hitters are who gives a damn anyways nowadays and a combined no hitters are really who gives a damn, but congratulations to the Cubs players who were involved in it. It was Davies to para Schaffen and Kimbrell. So you took four pitchers to go nine innings, no earned runs. They had eight walks, eight walks. Should we be celebrating this eight walks? I get it. It technically goes down as a no hitter. And that's great. When I was a kid, I thought this was a big deal because when I was a kid, these were bigger deals. People tried to get on base, but when your average batting average up and down the lineup is in the two thirties, it's really not that big a deal to, to, uh, to no hit anymore. So a complete game shutout. That's impressive. But the no hit thing doesn't impress me anymore because these guys are just, you look at the batting average up and down the line, and this is one of the better lineups in baseball. The, the, the Dodgers leadoff hitter Mookie Betts is only hitting 247. Cody Bellinger's hitting 212. He's our cleanup hitter. They had Pujols in there. Father Time hitting 224. Anyways, uh, the Cubs did get the W. That's really all that really matters at the end of the day. The Cubs beat the Dodgers. If you look at the standings real quick in Major League Baseball heading into this weekend, Tampa leads the, the AL East by a half game over Boston. Yankees are, are four back. Yankees are in Boston starting tonight all weekend long. Should be a great series. Should be a lot of fun. White Sox have a two-game lead over the Indians in the Central and in the AL West. Houston and Oakland are in a dogfight. Two of the better records in baseball. Houston has a two-game lead on Oakland. And sadly enough, the Angels are 10 and a half back. They're fourth in the division as Mike Trout continues to be on the IL. But even if he was there, I think that only equates to maybe two more wins. Uh, the Mets, they lead the NL East by three and a half over the Washington Nationals, who continue to win. They won nine of ten. Philadelphia is five out. The Braves are five and a half out. The Cubs, in a flat-footed tie with the Brewers, four in front of, C of Cincinnati and six in front of the Cardinals. The Giants, four and a half in front of the Dodgers and Padres. And the rest of the division is just garbage. Colorado, 17 and a half out. And the Arizona Diamondbacks, 21 up, 55 down. They are already 28 games out of first place. It's an absolute embarrassment. Slide over to the NBA playoffs last night if you missed it because everyone was asleep. Phoenix goes down to the Clippers. L.A. now just getting down two games to one. They'll play Saturday night at 9 o'clock Eastern. If you dare to stay up that damn late, uh, you'll be snoozing in the pews the next morning. Uh, tonight, you've got the Hawks up against Milwaukee. They're starting even, even too late. I mean, it, it, I see the fans. Go, it's not just me. I see the fans complain about this on Twitter all day long. At, Atlanta Hawks fans are, are, are telling, telling the NBA, I can't stay up and watch this. What the hell are you doing to me? Hawks, Milwaukee, 830 tonight. And for those of us that like the NBA plus, and I've been watching it more than I, than I ever did uh, last year. This is just absolutely ridiculous. You got one game, one game, you're going to start at 830. 
Get your ass out of bed and get to going, man. My God. This is what happens when you give the stimulus checks out, right? Even the NBA is staying in bed late. All right, here we go. NHL tonight. You've got game seven, eight o'clock Eastern lightning versus the Islanders. It's in Tampa. It's do or die. Montreal skated on They'll They're awaiting the winner. Montreal won last night, three to two in overtime to knock out the Vegas Knights. And so they await the winner of tonight's game, do or die game seven NHL hockey starting at eight o'clock. That doesn't get any better than that. Now, now what's funny about this is we always talk about how the NBA and NHL can't get out of their own way. They're always competing with each other. If you start a hockey game at eight o'clock Eastern and you start a NBA game at eight 30 Eastern, there's a very good chance the two of them are going to end about the same time around 11 o'clock tonight. So you're going to be flipping back and forth to see which game's actually competitive. My, my money's going to be on the hockey game tonight. I want to see a game seven. I love game sevens. So you got that. We talked NBA, NBA, we talked major league baseball. And then the other big thing, of course, is the college baseball world series. We're at the semifinals. It's Vandy versus NC state two o'clock Eastern winner, go home for Vandy. If they, if they do win, they play NC state tomorrow, same situation. Texas has to beat Mississippi state to force another game. The winners of these brackets will face each other. Monday college world series begins. So there's not a lot of other big news right now. As, as, as we hit the, hit, hit the, uh, the news market going around, I saw a couple of stories, but they're really nothing, nothing to be writing home about. Um, the Steelers did cut pro bowl guard to Castro. So that's a little bit of, uh, of news. And you've got the, in the, in golf, you've got the travelers championship going on this weekend. That should be a lot of fun. 2020 winner was Dustin Johnson, but this is a star studded list of who's, who's won this bubble. Watts has won it three times and he's in contention again. And then of course, uh, got Jordan Spieth won it in 17. Mickelson's won it twice. And if you want to go back old school, Greg Norman won this in 95 and Paul Z Azinger won it in 87 and 89. Lee Trevino won this thing in 72. Uh, Arnold Palmer was a two-time winner and Sam Sneed. That's a name. Sam Sneed won this thing way back in 55. I believe it started in 1952. It's changed names over the years. Travelers championship since, uh, 2006, 2007, I think. Uh, all right, we're going to go ahead and get out of here and uh, have a great weekend, y'all. Fourth of July is next weekend. So we will be here Monday through Thursday next week. We will not be here on uh, Friday. I don't believe. I might be able to sneak in a Friday show. It really depends on what's going on. Have a great weekend, y'all. And uh, make sure to get your ass out to the ball game. Yeah, find a game. Go to one. Little League, minor league baseball. There's got to be something in your town. Take yourself out to the ball game. Take me out to the ball.